It is a wintry day in Lexington, Kentucky, and we're at Commonwealth Stadium awaiting the start of the University of Florida's game with the Wildcats of Kentucky and Jim Yarbrough. Every time that I've ever seen a Florida play Kentucky on television, the grass was brown. That's right. They say bluegrass state, but it's always brown when we come here. I don't think that picture does the uh, weather justice. It's colder than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> they say 36 degrees, but I would have to figure chillier, at least for those of us who live in the sunshine state, it certainly is. And when they talk about a late arriving crowd, they really mean it here because why get here early and freeze? I don't blame them at all. You're looking at the Kentucky Wildcats the Gators holding the edge in the series. The uh, Cats in their very familiar white and blue. As we get ready for the start of the game, there's their mascot on the field. Of course, uh, Albert the Alligator is here too. And uh, I don't know how Albert's going to fare today. There's Scott Armstrong, one of the seniors from the University of Florida's uh, Fight Gator football team from Ocala. I uh, need to mention that uh, for the Kentucky seniors, uh, their last ball game at Commonwealth Stadium. So as we talk about uh, the battles in the Southeastern Conference and it's your last Saturday afternoon at home, you know those Kentucky kids will be fired up, especially the seniors. The University of Florida Gators coming off two very, very big victories over Auburn and Georgia last week at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. And what a great game it was offensively for Kerwin Bell and Ricky Natillo. Well, All-American performances by both uh, Kerwin Bell and Ricky Natillo the last couple of weeks. Ricky Natillo with uh, five receptions, I believe, against Auburn and seven against the Georgia Bulldogs, three of which were uh, touchdown passes. Uh, Kerwin Bell having outstanding success the last couple of weeks. He had plenty of time to throw that football, and the Gators took advantage of it with two big victories over two arch rivals. They're going to have to have some success throwing the ball this afternoon as well. The weather is bad. The field might be a little bit sloppy, but you're going to be able to have to pass that football successfully if you're going to win the game this afternoon. Well, it is a chilly day, as we have mentioned, but it's going to be chilly on both sides of the line. However, the Gators not used to playing in this type of weather, uh, except up here in Kentucky and occasionally, and the Cats are pretty used to it. As you say, this is their last game at home. They finish off with Tennessee, and that game will be in Knoxville. So the uh, teams are meeting now at the center of the field as we await the kickoff. Five and four, the Gators come in here. The Kentucky Wildcats with a record of four, four, and one. So they've got a perfect record for Coach Jerry Claiborne this year. Jerry Claiborne, Jerry Claiborne, excellent uh, football coach, had great success at Virginia Tech, then Maryland, and coming back to his alma mater, the University of Kentucky, in his fifth year. At Kentucky, uh, Kentucky not winning in the last, uh, I believe, six occasions against the Florida Gators. Their last victory was in 1979, but uh, they feel like they have a legitimate chance this afternoon, and, and they should feel that way. They've got a, a, a good ball club. We're looking at Jeff Zimmerman, Ricky Mateel, Adrian White, Dwayne Ferguson, the captain's on the field. We want to say hello to Blake the Aurelian, uh, Zavin Aurelian's young seven-year-old son who's been ill recently, and we're hoping that Blake feels better and enjoys this ball game this afternoon. His daddy's done a great job as a defensive coordinator. Well, he certainly did. And last week, Clifford Charlton named the co-defensive player of the week of the Southeastern Conference after a great performance against the University of Georgia. We look at the coaching staff, Galen Hall, who was named the head coach here in 1984. After the University of Florida Gators won the Southeastern Conference Championship and in the locker room, Galen Hall was named officially, he was at that time interim head coach, named officially as head coach at the University of Florida. And what a super job he has done with the Orange and Blue. Uh, you know, he's got fond memories of that afternoon. Adrian White uh, picking up the interception in the last uh, few seconds of that ball game, salvaging the victory. Uh, allowing the Gators to win their first Southeastern Conference championship. Well, it certainly was a great victory at that time for the Gators, and Galen has gone on to great success at uh, Florida. The Gators with a win this afternoon in very definite. They are right now in contention for a bowl bid, and I think a win this afternoon would put them in a good bowl. Robert McGinney, number six, is going to be kicking off for the University of Florida. 
He is the uh, young gentleman from Jacksonville, from Fletcher High School, who transferred to the University of Florida from Auburn and kicked the 51-yarder uh, against the Tigers a couple of weeks ago in Gainesville. So McGinney gets ready to move to the football. And he boots it high. It is going to go to Burbage, and Burbage across the 15, across the 20, and up to the 25-yard line before he's swarmed under by the uh, Florida Special Teams Unit as they get down there. And Barry DeWitt, number 14, a senior out of Brooksville, makes the hit for the Gators. It'll be first down and 10 for the Cats as they set up shop on the 25-yard line against the University of Florida. Got a trick play right here off the bat. And the snap goes to Mark Logan, number 25, as a scramble as he crosses the 25 to the 26-yard line. So just picks up a yard on that carry as Florida was able to sniff it out. Very interesting play right there. The center literally went up and lateraled the ball into the backfield. Kentucky known uh, the last couple of years for their trick play offense. They'll run eight or nine trick plays in a ball game. They make Bobby Bowden look very conservative at Florida State. <laughs> Ransville number nine at quarterback, and they go with a low setback on second and nine to the 26. He drops the throw, and it is complete to Wheeler, and he is to the 31 yard line. So the reception made by Mark Wheeler, a senior from Annadale, Virginia, and the hit by Scott Armstrong, the senior out of Ocala Forest High School. Well, Kentucky's going to try and sneak the tight end on a delay route underneath the inside linebackers. Ransdell has plenty of time right here. Wheeler just sneaks on the inside after faking a block. Scott Armstrong finally making the tackle, but they picked up about six or seven yards on that play. Third and about three at the 32-yard line. An eye formation for the motion man going to the top of the screen as Ransdell looks over the floor to D, and he rolls out. by the tight end Ricky Mulberry the left corner man brings him down for the Florida Gators. Mark Wheeler coming into this ball game with only nine receptions but he has two right here in the first drive the first chance that Kentucky has to touch the football. They make excellent use of the tight end. Uh, Jim we need to mention that Keith Williams is not starting this afternoon. Henry Brown is in a defensive tackle. He's fighting a bad uh, bout with the flu this afternoon. First and 10 at the 46 yard line is Ransdell with the shovel pass, and it goes to Logan, and Logan hits up the middle for a short game. Clifford Charlton, the outside linebacker, junior from Tallahassee Leon High School, making the tackle for the Gators. A two-yard pickup, it'll be second down and eight, and the ball on the 48-yard line of Kentucky. Remember the Alabama football game in Gainesville, where they had a lot of success with this little shuttle pass. If it, if it happened to bounce on the ground, it's really an incomplete, incomplete pass because the ball is going forward. Another trick play by Kentucky. From the eye, they go to the split backfield with receivers left and right, and Ransdell drops the throw. He's being chased and throws, and it is at the 50-yard line. And he is very impressive. Louisville, Kentucky coming out of the backfield. Arthur White making the play for the Gators. What a play Arthur White made, too. The ball was up for grabs. Arthur White sticking his helmet in between the numbers, and the ball dropped harmlessly to the ground. Kentucky again with uh, a lot of rushing success this year, rushing the football uh, more often than they throw it, come out throwing against the Florida Gators. Third and eight at the 48-yard line now for the Kentucky Wildcats slot offense to the left side. And Ransdell takes the snap on the shotgun. And he is brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 40-yard line. Over Carlson getting in along with Henry Brown to make the tackle. And Jeff Ross, the nose guard, doing an excellent with pressure up the middle as we look at Jeff trotting off the field from Seminole, Florida with an excellent sophomore Coast Guard that young man is. Jeff Nelson back in punt formation number one. He is a uh, sophomore averaging almost 42 yards per move. He's fourth and ten at the 46 officially. His kick will come from about the 30 and he gets it off and Steve Lowe looks at it and out of bounds here on the near sideline in front of the part of this at the 38 yard line. So Loden was back there and the ball bounced off him and uh, Kentucky takes him out of bounds here. So Florida gets a break on that. Yeah, Steve Loden, a short safety. He's responsible for a missed kick or a shank or a ball.
ball that bounces on the ground. He did the right thing. He was trying to catch the ball on the hop. Just couldn't find the handle. And luckily, the ball went forward and out of bounds. The Gators have on about their own 38-yard line. If you look at that big, strong offensive line here on the graphic that did so well the last two weeks against the Auburn Tigers and the Georgia Bulldogs. Sherwin Bell at the quarterback spot. The pitch is going to go to James Massey. Massey turns it off the left side and gets across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Ron Robinson, a freshman safety, number 26 from Nashville, Tennessee, brings him down. A seven-yard gain. It'll be second and three as we come back. Gardner, Reese Wilkins, Adam Shannon, and Dorch. Vince, Chanel, Johnson, Mays, and Robinson defensively for the Wildcats of Kentucky. On second and two, the Gators with a eye formation. And the give-off is going to go to Massey, and he's going to get the first down as he moves into Kentucky territory. Well, Jim, in the pregame show, you talked about establishing the run on this field. And uh, Lord has just gotten two good efforts from Massey. Peter's currently on Jim Knight got a 10 team rushing the football in the Southeastern Conference. But the first couple of runs they've had this afternoon have worked very well. 11 minutes and 7 seconds to play first quarter and no score as Kerwin Bell goes with a slot eye to the right side. Kerwin Bell drops back to throw and he hits the high and the field. They say it was not a pass and not a fumble. So it was Jay Dortch who was the man that caused all the havoc for the University of Kentucky Wildcats. Kerwin's going to get hit in the back by goes forward voluntarily or involuntarily, it's going to be a, a passing attempt. And that was an incomplete pass. So the Gators cut the line once again. It's second down at the midfield strike. A split back here behind Bell as he drops the throw. It does, and it is incomplete. The at the 42-yard line. And Kentucky and Falls is incomplete. Anthony Williams, an excellent pass receiver for the Gators all season long. Just can't find the handle right there. Kerwin Bell delivered the ball right between uh, need to mention that Kerwin was hit rather severely there on the previous play in the back. That's the way to lose the quarterback in, getting to get the, in the back. They cannot protect him. Third down and 10 at the midfield strike for Florida. Slot to the right side with a split backfield behind Kerwin Bell. As he looks to go, he's quick, and he's going long overhead, and it is going to be incomplete. It looks to me like there was a mix-up between the receiver and the quarterback on what pattern to run. Well, on the blitz, Kerwin Bell thought Ricky Mathiel was going to run a fly route, but Ricky pulled up and Kerwin threw the ball away. Tony made him coverage, doing a nice job of covering Ricky Mathiel, who is so dangerous for the University of Florida at the wide receiver position. So McAndrew is in in the punt formation. The kick is going to come. He's standing at about the 30. It's a low bobble snap, but he gets it off nicely. And Burbage. Let's it drop down, and Florida catches it at the mid-yard line, and there is a flag on the play. The University of Florida's number 33, Dwayne Glover, gets down and, and catches the football. Now, you can catch the football when you're the punting team. If the receiving team does not make an attempt to catch the football, there were Kentucky receivers in the area, but whether they were making an attempt to catch the football or not, up for debate. Evidently, the officials thought they could catch the football, and there's been a flag the Gators for interference in that five-yard neutral zone that the receiver of the punt is allowed to have. Glover got in that neutral zone. That's going to be a five-yard penalty. Nice 42-yard move by the Cameroon, 10-26, and uh, there's no score in the football game as we're into the first quarter, so it'll be first down and 10, and the ball will be spotted down at the 13-yard line. Ransom at the quarterback spot, and his give-off is going to go to Higgs, and Higgs trying to turn it outside and gets to about the 15-yard line, so give him a couple of tough yards on that, it'll be second and fall at eight as we come back over Carrollton, the outside linebacker makes the tackle for the Gators. Mark Higgs, the third leading rusher for the Kentucky Wildcats with 366 yards coming into this ball game. Again, Kentucky without their leading ball carrier, Abby Joe Hunter, who's out with a huge score. Higgs at the top of the eye, as you look at that, he's getting the signals. And now Higgs comes to the power spot. Pass out of the to a man coming out of the backfield, and uh, that was Higgs, and Higgs is drilled as he 
catch is a good ball by Jarvis Williamson. That'll bring up third down and four with the ball at the 19 yard line. Jarvis Williams has the short area right here. He's waiting to see what the result of the bootleg action is going to be in close and throw pass on the receiver. Making an excellent tackle in the flat. Jarvis Williams, uh, one of the policemen in that secondary, the crunch punch for the Florida Gators. So Ransdell's four for five thus far in the first quarter. On third and four at the 19 yard line, he drops back again. trying to put pressure on Jeff Ruff breaks through but they want him to come through at that point now they're going to dump the ball off to Logan watch this effort he escapes Adrian White Terry Watkins misses the tackle and finally the young man does get the first down first and 10 at the 24 Ramsdale turns outside his pass to Burbage was complete and Burbage goes down at the 41 yard line Jarvis Williams the right corner man for Florida is right there fans are on their feet cheering the effort here at Commonwealth Stadium in this first quarter. No score yet. Ransdell again with great success throwing the football this afternoon, hitting Cornell Burbage, who had 17 receptions coming into this ball game. Burbage just got down and sat right in front of the secondary, secondary just beyond the linebackers. Ransdell delivered the football. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. Split backfield behind Ransdell. He drops back. He looks the throw. He's got plenty of time. senior a lot of boys he's not gonna uh, make a middle error that a young player might uh, he is a senior he's a leader of this football team and right there he was looking 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 even though he was getting some pressure he was still looking for his receivers even as he ran the football out of bounds 804 to play in the first quarter no score Kentucky on the march against the Gators it is second down and five at the 46 yard line for the Cats and now they go to the shotgun as Ransdell is at about the 40-yard line. He drops back, and he's being chased. He throws that quick screen out, and Logan is thrilled. He catches the football behind the line by Terry Watkins, a freshman from Pensacola. Terry Watkins with that lightning quick speed breaking on the screen pass attempt. He sees and recognizes the play right away. Ransdell is trying to set up the screen and fight the defensive line. There you see Jeff Ross coming in. Now he's going to dump the ball over to Logan, but Terry Watkins read that play rapidly and closed the major tackle in the backfield. Third long for the Kentucky Wildcats. 14 yards to go at the 37 yard line on third down as they again go to the shotgun. And Ransdell, the senior, throws out of the flat. And it is. As if they give him the completion on it. Yes, they give him the completion on it in front of the Kentucky bench. And he is into Florida territory. Cornell Burbage with the catch. He is a senior from Lexington, Kentucky. Now, Cornell's got a bit of a hot dog in him, it seems to me. He's out there leading chairs as well as catching the football. And as long as you can do both, you can get away with it. But uh, one of excellent catch right in front of the Kentucky Wildcat bench. Jarvis Williams getting there a shade late. Just a tremendous catch by Burbage. First and 10 at the 48-yard line of Florida for the Kentucky Wildcats as they go with the eye. And the pitch is going to go to Higgs. And Higgs pitches back to Ransdell, who is taken out of bounds in front of the Florida bench on the far sideline. Uh, maybe picked up a yard or so, but what a scramble that was. Pat Pitter makes the hit. He is the young man from Lakeland, Florida, junior from Lakeland Kathleen. Well, they tried to get the Gators to fight on the running action. Ransdell pitched the ball to Higgs. Higgs then was going to run the football. Ransdell dropped behind him, threw the ball back to Ransdell, and they were trying to get Burbage deep down in the secondary, but the Gators had it covered, and Ransdell was forced simply to run the ball out of bounds. Second and nine at the 47-yard line for the Wildcats as Ramsdale rolls to the left and throws out of the flat. It is incomplete. It was intended for Aaron Prince number 83 and good coverage by Jarvis Williams of Florida. Haters again in zone coverage. 
Jarvis Williams breaking on the football. Jarvis Williams, one of the better, if not one of the best quarterbacks in the Southeastern. Third down and nine at the 47 with 6.46 to play in the first quarter. And neither team has put any points on the board thus far. In a hard hitting ball game. Slot offense now would be to the left side for Kentucky. As Ransom hands off on the delay to Andy Murray. And Andy Murray hits for maybe an extra yard or so, but that's going to be about it. And Clifford Charlton making the hit for the University of Florida Fighting Gators. Southeastern Conference Defensive Player of the Week last week against the Georgia Bulldogs. Watch Clifford Charlton on the pass rush, recognize the draw attempt, making the tackle in the backfield. Fourth and eight at the 46 of Florida. The kick is going to come from about the 40 as Jeff Nelson gets it off for Kentucky, and it'll be taken by the University of Florida Gators at the 19-yard line. And making the reception was Jarvis Williams, number 26 for the Gators. So they set up shop at the... Now they're going to place it down to the 18-yard line, and it'll be first down. This is one of the few times Jarvis Williams has been back to receive punts in the safety position. Terry Watkins and Richie McGill generally handling those duties for the University of Florida this year, but Jarvis Williams, obviously with all his athletic ability, can capably run that football as well from them. Receiving the punt. First and 10 for the Gators. 6.07 to play in the first quarter. Kerwin Bell talking to uh, his troops as the Kentucky Wildcats. They go with uh, a defense that has been around for a long time. They go with a wide tackle six. And they have at least six seniors starting for Kentucky this afternoon on defense. That's a brave young man right there, not feeling the uh, elements. Maybe he did get here and tailgate a little early this afternoon. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> He's their version of uh, Stands up on their feet. Oh, what a chilly day it is as we look at a lot of orange and blue. A lot of Florida fans making the trip up here from the Sunshine State. Kerwin Bell with the I formation. And Bell's give off is going to go to the line of scrimmage. He might even have lost the yard on that. The Kentucky Wildcats were right there. John Shannon, a junior tackle from Devon, Kentucky, makes the hit. Mark McGriff checks into the huddle, number 80. He's come on in the past few games and played very well in the tight end position. Sure hands and blocks well. It's a slot eye. The slot will be to the left side for Florida. And Curly Bell again getting off the pass. The pass the 22-yard line. So give it four yards on the carry. We come back third and call it six. And Oliver Barnett on pressure from Louisville makes the hit for Kentucky, number 79. That Kentucky defense very similar to what the Georgia Bulldogs do. They'll crowd eight men near that line of scrimmage. Keep the corners back in one safety, sometimes in a three deep situation with zone coverage. A lot of men crowding that line of scrimmage for Kentucky. Slot offense again. And Kerwin Bell again gets off to Massey, and Massey gets to the 25-yard line before he's brought down, but he's going to be short of the first down. So that means that the Gators are going to have to kick away. Larry Smith, the left side linebacker, makes the tackle for Kentucky. He is their leading tackler. Jamie McAndrew will kick, and... Uh, we're looking at Burbage, number four, just a moment ago, who is back in the receiving position for the Wildcats. A low snap, McAndrew gets off a low kick, and hits down at the 40, and rolls across. And Burbage is being chased across the far side of the field, turns up field, and he's loose at the midfield stripe, and then he is taken out of bounds in front of the Gator bench, and taken out probably at the 32-yard line, but there's a flag on the play. Well, this Cornell Burbage is on his way to Hollywood, it looks like to me. He's uh, an exciting player, but uh, he's one of his own biggest fans, I think. Leading the cheers after he runs with a football. Let's see what the penalty is. I think the, uh, could be a clip. A 
just guessing. Of Sometimes uh, they hold the punting team as they try to cover. We're not uh, sure exactly what the call is. Burbage does get outside. Ferguson trying to get out. He does turn the corner. That was a 43-yard kick by Jamie McAndrew. Holding against the Florida Gators to climb. Declined by Kentucky. So that is going to give them excellent field position as the run back placed the ball at the 32-yard line. So they've got it first and 10 with 413 to go in the first quarter and no score in the game. Galen's asking for a number. They called the holding but didn't give him a number. He's trying to find out what the offense was. Gator defense with their backs to the wall. Kentucky with uh, the ability to move the football this afternoon. Getting excellent field position after receiving the punt. Ransdell at the line with a slot to the left side. He gives off to the tackle back. Four-yard line, Mark Higgs, a junior running back, uh, makes the run for the Wildcats of Kentucky and uh, run down by the University of Florida Fighting Gator defense. Big hole right there in the middle is finally Ricky Mulberry makes the tackle in the secondary. Number 32, Mulberry coming up from his quarterback position. Slot offense, and the give-off is going to go to him. For the first down to the 12 yard line for Kentucky. The Cats on the move here with 3.34 to play in the first quarter. Lewis Oliver finally making the hit for the Gators. Sam Rotel at number 72 at the tackle position, doing a nice job right there for the Wildcats. So the Cats are in scoring position now with the ball on the 13 yard line. It is first and 10. They split receivers left and right. And on the reverse, it's going to be number 19, D. Smith, trying to turn it upfield, and he turns it inside the 10-yard line to the 9, Mulberry making the hit to Junior from Palatka for the University of Florida. Well, nothing conservative about this Wildcat offense, is there? Uh, excellent call. Steve Stipe prevented that play from having touchdown success. Stipe turning the ball carrier in. D. Smith was not able to get outside. Stipe was doing his job, had to cut in, and the Gators made the tackle. Well, they let it all hang out uh, this afternoon against Florida. It's second down at four, and the ball is on the seven-yard line. 2.41 to play in the first quarter, and still no score at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky. With the eye formation, the give-off is going to go to Higgs, and Higgs gets maybe a tough yard before he's brought down by the Florida D, as they were able to sniff that one out. Todd Gatlin, inside linebacker, a sophomore from Fort Walton, Choctaw, makes the tackle. Webby Burnett also seeing action right now, Jim, at the nose guard position. Webby alternating with Jeff Rock. Webby has come on strong in the second part of the season with the freshman out of Pensacola, Florida, Pensacola High School, and uh, it's third down and three at the six, and the pitch is going to go to Logan, and Logan trying to turn it outside, and is taken down as he gets inside the five to the four, but not enough for the first down. Arthur White, the junior from Frostproof, makes the hit. Walter Bird also on the field right now, number 79 for the Gators. On fourth down and short yardage now, the uh, Kentucky Wildcats are going to take a timeout. And we'll be back with more, but first, let's take time out for these messages. And one on the four-yard line for the Wildcats knocking on the Gators' door. Florida up front, they got everybody coming. There is the pitch going off to number 25, Mark Logan. And Logan right down to the goal line, but he does not get in. Lewis Oliver makes the tackle, but they've got the first down, and they've got the football right on right outside the goal line. Kentucky doing a nice job getting outside. Look at Logan being led by Mark Higgs on the block. Ricky Mulberry knocked down at the line of scrimmage, making the hit. Finally, Lewis Oliver at the goal line. First and goal on the one foot line for the Wildcats of Kentucky. The giveaway. So Rand 
Central engineers a very nice drive downfield on Florida. And the story is great field position after the return of the punt by Burbage. Kentucky taking advantage of great field position, moving the ball with success, running and throwing it in for six. Jones will hold, Wheeler will snap, and Worley will kick, waiting for the snap right now. And he splits the uprights. Kentucky up on Florida here in the first quarter, seven to nothing. We'll be back with more, but first, these messages. You're looking at Joe Worley, his kick just split the uprights for the extra point after Kentucky score, and the Wildcats lead 7 on a minute 7 to play in the first quarter here at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky, as Worley hangs it. And it'll bounce down and come out of bounds right along the sideline at about the 9-yard line. Let's look at that score again. Well, Kentucky again, one of the stronger rushing teams in the conference. Banging it across the tackle. Mark Higgs, number 22, not much room, but he didn't need much to get the six. Seven plays, 32-yard drive because of the excellent field position on the return of punt by Burbage. Brooksville, Florida loves the Gators up here all the way from Fernando County. Scoring drive, uh, as we said a little earlier, 32 yards. Uh, Kentucky is 13 attempts and 34 yards rushing this afternoon. Joe Worley, career record holder for Kentucky, as he kicks and it's going to go high. Gary Watkins, who's taking it at the 11. He's at the 15. He's across the 20 yard line, running cross field. He's going to turn up at the 25, still on his feet. And he's taken down Swarmbender at about the 27 yard line by the Wildcats in their flags and whistles all over the field. Uh, tempers get a little heated on this chilly day. on the return bodies flying all over the field as they usually do on a kickoff return I think it was some activity after he was down causing the fight to break out right there very unfortunate situation there's plenty of times to get your hits in during a ball game both teams are going to be penalized probably an offsetting violation they're going to leave the football right there probably Let's see what happens. Well, they're talking to Jerry Claiborne, now they're talking to Galen Hall. <laughs> and um, Galen's not happy at all about the situation. 56 seconds left to play in this first quarter, and Kentucky's up on the Gators by a score of 7 to nothing. Well, Kentucky comes out this afternoon saying they're not going to get pushed around in their home stadium, and they take a quick lead in the first quarter and they come back hustling and fighting and the Gators have to come back and answer the challenge. Well, the ball's going to stay right where it is, right at that 27-yard line, and it's a slot high, or rather a slot formation, and Kerwin Bell drops the throw, and he's going to go long for Simmons, and it is incomplete. The coverage man was Ron Mack, number eight, for the University of Kentucky. And Stacy Simmons was deep on the pattern, the 5'10", 175 pound freshman. Well, I think a freshman mistake right there. He didn't believe Kerwin Bell could deliver the ball that far, that accurately. He slowed up for an instant, then turns it back on right there. Mack might have got a hand on the ball or caused vision to be blurred for a second. Stacy Simmons could go on the football. Second and 10 now. 27 yard line now for the Florida Gators. The eye formation and the pitch is going to go to Massey. Massey turns it up for the end and goes 
down, and there is a scramble to the football at the 32-yard line, and on the fumble, Kentucky has recovered. The Wildcats recover the football. A big, vicious hit on James Massey, the tailback by the Kentucky Wildcats. Let's see if we can pick up the number on the hit. The tailback's going to make his cut back. There's, there's an opportunity right there, but it's number 26, Ron Robinson. Gets his hat right on the football, and it bounces in the air. Kentucky has it again. Excellent field position with this turnover for Kentucky. First and 10 at the 31-yard line, and Manstow gives off to the tailback, and that would be Higgs. He hits it to the 29-yard line. Arthur White, the junior inside linebacker, making the tackle for the Gators. As we look at Jerry Claiborne, head coach at Kentucky, his alma mater, up by a score of 7-0 as the seconds tick away in this first period at Commonwealth Stadium. I mentioned uh, Kentucky currently ranks number seven in the Southeastern Conference on total offense. And we will be back in the second quarter for the first timeout for these messages. Cats of Kentucky have the football second down and eight at the 29-yard line of Florida as we begin the second quarter. And the Kentucky Wildcats leading the Gators by a score of seven to nothing this afternoon on a chilly day in Lexington. Gators off to a slow start in the first quarter. In the recent past, the last couple of weeks, the Gators not getting a lot done in the first quarter, but coming on strong to win the previous two ball games. Let's see if Kentucky can continue to control this ball game here in the second quarter. Rands, though, with a quick pass out of the flat to Mark Higgs, and Higgs is dragged down at the 30-yard line. So taken down behind the line of scrimmage by Ricky Mulberry, a junior left corner man from Palatka. Another variation of the screen pass, this time trying to dump the ball out in the to a wide receiver on the screen. Kentucky, the screen pass. Here's a bootleg screen. Actually, he's going to bootleg to the left, then turn back, throw back, throw back screen. Kentucky with every play conceivable in their playbook, and they're showing most of them this afternoon. Third and eight as Ransdell drops the throw, and he is taken down behind the line of scrimmage at the 35-yard line. Jason Lambert gets in along with Henry Brown, the junior right tackle from Fort Myers. Henry Brown seeing a lot of action this afternoon. Uh, Keith Williams, we mentioned, out with the flu. At the top of your screen, Henry Brown's going to come. You see Jason Lambert pursuing from the top of your screen. There's Henry Brown finally making the sack. Well, they're going to go for the field goal, Joe Worley, and it's going to come from the 41-yard line, which is a 51-yard attempt. Jones will hold. Watch the fake. Kentucky known to uh, run the trick play. Not on this one. He kicks it, and it is no good. And so the football goes over to Clark. He did have the distance, just a shade to the left, about five or seven yards wide left, but he didn't have the leg to get it there. Not a lot of wind on the field uh, today. At least it doesn't seem to be uh, that much that it would affect it. Windshield could be much more severe if the wind was blowing, but you're right. There's a kind of a lazy wind blowing this afternoon. Not much of a wind at all. First and 10 at the 34 for Florida. They go with the eye. Hodges 10, the motion man, to the top of your screen as Bell gives off to Octavius Gould, who hits to about the 38-yard line before he's brought down by Jeff Kramer, a junior from Newport, Kentucky, number 53, the right side linebacker. Octavius Gould nursing a sore ankle, played very little last week against the Georgia Bulldogs. Most of the season, he's been the number one tailback for the Florida Gators. Nice to see him healthy out there this afternoon. It is. Ricky Mateo splits out wide to the right, 89. On second is five at the 39-yard line. And Hodges goes in motion, number 10. Off the eye, Kerwin Bell against the field. He turns it outside. He's got the first down as he goes to the midfield strike. So Octavius Goo, the freshman from Browns, Mills, New Jersey, the Parade All-American. Picks up the first down for the Gators. Ron Robinson, the safety, took him out for Kentucky. Kentucky likes to crowd that football on defense. Does make him vulnerable when they get outside. You don't see it right yet, but Eric Hodges right there is going to pick up a little bit of a block 
on the outside, and that's all uh, running back with Gould's ability needs is just a little bit of help to get outside. Then he turns that speed on, gets around the corner. First and 10 for the Gators at the 39 of Kentucky as Kerwin Bell with the eye and Hodges 10, the motion man. And Kerwin Bell gives off again to Octavius Gould, and gets into the line, and Kentucky stops it right there again. Jeff Kramer, the uh, junior inside linebacker on the right side, makes the hit for the Wildcats. They lead by a score of 7 0, 12 14 to play in the first half. Very tempting for those Gators to go up top, go long, trying to take advantage perhaps of that three deep zone that Kentucky is showing them right now. Very tempting, I'm sure, to Kerwin Bell and Ricky Mateo. Teal splitting to the left. Flip backfield behind Kerwin Bell. And Bell the throw. And he is hit as he throws forward. And Carwell Gardner, number 98, got him on the wrist. So Bell is 0 for 5 thus far this afternoon. Very slow start for Kerwin Bell that time again. Pressure coming from his blind side. He wasn't able to see the defender coming. Gardner putting pressure on him, hitting him just as he was releasing the football. Third down and eight on the 47-yard line. Florida has not converted a third down yet this afternoon. As Kerwin Bell for throw, he's got the time and unloads, and it is the incomplete. Daryl Willard, 21, was the intended receiver, and Tony May is the coverage man for the University of Kentucky. Darrell Willard, the true freshman, Gainesville Eastside High School had four or five catches last week against the Georgia Bulldogs. Not able to catch that ball, and the Gators were holding. Anyway, so even if he had caught it, there would have been a penalty against the Gators. Fourth down, Kentucky holds the Florida Gators here early in the second quarter. So the ball at the 47-yard line. And Jamie McAndrew is back in punt formation for the University of Florida. This is his third punt of the afternoon. Right now, Kentucky showing 10 men near the line of scrimmage, perhaps bluffing the rush, perhaps they're coming all out. Looks like they're coming out with an all-out rush on the punt. Yes, here they come. McAndrew gets it off very nicely, really sails it. Burbage calls for it back at about the eight-yard line, takes it down, and so it'll be first and ten. Florida special teams doing an excellent job on coverage on that one. Jamie McAndrew certainly doing his job, hitting the Kentucky Wildcats inside their ten-yard line. He has come on very strong, a freshman out of Parker, Colorado. Came here originally to play baseball like his dad, who played so many years ago for the New York Mets, but uh, walked on as the punter and earned a scholarship as the punter. It's been an excellent job all season long for the Gators. He's, Jamie McAndrew. He's cool. First and ten, the ball on the nine-yard line. Trying to turn it outside. He gets up to about the 18-yard line, but there's a flag on the play at the 15. Adrian White making the tackle for the University of Florida. Hicks, very quick, very low center of gravity. Able to threaten outside right there and turn the ball inside, but uh, Kentucky's going to be flagged for holding on the play. So that's going to cost them uh, a little bit. At game time this afternoon, the temperature was 36 degrees. The wind out of the southwest at 6 to 8 miles an hour, and there was a light drizzle, although I think that has pretty much lifted. It uh, were coming last night from Louisville to Lexington. And uh, it snowed on the way up here, but it is, it is just wet today. The penalty is going to move the ball back to the eight-yard line, where it will be first down for the Wildcats. Higgs is brought down at the 11-yard line after a short game by the University of Florida. Arthur White, 43, the junior, and a prosperous makes the tackle for the Gators. Arthur White doing an excellent job from his inside linebacker position, scraping outside. Clifford Charlton was trying to shut that play down. Look at Arthur White. Watch him scrape outside the block. Bounces off the block to make the tackle. Ricky Mulberry closes to help. Second and seven at the 12-yard line for the Wildcats. Branson again gives off the Higgs and gives it across the 17-yard line. 
Hooker Carlton brings him down. Dick's not very big, 5'7", 185, but he runs more like he's 215. You can tell he's got a lot of heart and a lot of character running full out. Nobody's told him he's only 185 pounds. Third short. Burbage checks back into the Kentucky lineup on third down. It'll be two for the 17 yard line. As far as D, he digs in. Ransdell again gets off this time to hit, and he is stacked up. He's going to be close to it, but I don't think he got it. Henry Brown, the junior out of Fort Myers, making the tackle. Yes, he did get it. He got the first down. Hicks, not very big, but as he was hit, fell forward, lunged forward across the yard, yard line. You see, that's where he has to get. Rodney Weston actually hitting from behind, giving him a little bit more mo momentum, and Hicks falls across the 20-yard line for the first down for the Kentucky walk. He's having a good afternoon. Nine carries with 44 yards. First and 10 at the 20, as Ramsdale looks to shovel pass, and does to Mark Rosen who is drilled by Florida, Arthur White again, making the hit for the Gators of Florida, along with Henry Brown. That's a very underrated uh, first down that Kentucky just accomplished right there. They were back inside their 10-yard line. They're able to fight out, get a first down, get a little bit more working room. Excellent job by that Kentucky offense who had their backs against the wall right there. 9-16 to play in the second quarter. 7-0 Kentucky. Ransdell on second and seven off the 23-yard line to pass. And does. And it is complete. But he is drilled. D. Smith, number 19, makes the catch. He is drilled at the 27 by Clipper Charlton. Kentucky running a drag route with their wide receiver, sending some of the receivers deep. Ransdell simply waiting for D. Smith to cut across just beyond Steve Stite, but watch Clifford Charlton close rapidly to make the hit. Charlton was near the line of scrimmage and simply turned around, hustled into the secondary to make the tackle. Third and three at the 27-yard line. Bad in motion to the bottom of the screen as Ransdell rolls. He is looking out this way, turns up field, and he's got the first down. Wildcats. Bill Ransdell showing again that poise that we alluded to earlier, right there, simply on a sprint out action, looking for a wide receiver, looking for a back, someone open. They weren't there, so he merely picked up the first down, running the football himself. At the 34 yard line with 8 11 to play in the first half, and Kentucky sitting on a 7 0 lead. On the delay draw, Mark Higgs gets the ball and goes to the 35 yard line before Rodney Weston, the sophomore out of Belgrade, Florida. We got a flag on the field. It's a hold and it's against Kentucky. Now with the holding penalty, the Gators have the option of accepting the mark off of the yardage or making it second and ten at the line of scrimmage. They're going to send them back. They're going to put them way back. Back to the 25-yard line. That's an excellent opportunity as you look at Ty Smith signaling, signaling in the defense to the Gator defenders. This is an excellent opportunity for that Gator defense to shut Kentucky down in their own territory and make them punt. But Kentucky's been able to move the ball with some success this afternoon. Ransdell. Hands off, and his handoff is going to go to Higgs. Takes off the left side, and Florida takes him down after he picks up a yard. Arthur White making the hit once again, along with Terry Watkins, number four. Walter Bird, number 79, doing an excellent job right there as well from his defensive end position, defensive tackle position, forcing the running back to bounce outside so Watkins could make the tackle and Arthur White as well from his inside linebacker position. But Walter Bird did a nice job right there. Higgs has picked up 46 yards on the ground thus far. Second down, 19, as Ramsdale rolls out. There was a quick pass to Higgs. Still on his feet, and he's across the midfield strike and into Gator territory, taken out on the far side.
sideline and found the Gators in inside the 45 yard line at the 44 of Florida. And uh, first and 10 at the 45 yard line. And what a big play that was for the Wildcats. Seven minutes to play in the first half. They lead seven to nothing. Ransom puts a motion man to the near side. The pitch is going to go to Logan trying to turn it outside. And it is Kerry Watkins taking it down to the floor as he comes to the near sideline. Henry Brown and Adrian White forcing uh, Logan outside, outside. Finally, the quarterback, Jerry Watkins, can come up and make the tackle. Stretch him out. That's what you want to do on defense. Make them run east and west. Don't let them run north and south on you, so to speak. Second down nine at the 44-yard line now for the Kentucky Wildcats. Back over the football is Ken Lang. Senior from Gibsonia, Pennsylvania. Slot offense to the left side from the top of the aisle. It's good yardage in the first down for the Wildcats. All the way to the 30-yard line. Off tackle, double teaming the defensive tackle. Fullback doing a nice job right there. Allowing Greg Baker to get in the secondary. And did he ever get there in a hurry? First and 10 at the 30-yard line now for the Wildcats. And they've got a drive going here. Florida with the three down linemen as Ranstall throws the quick little shovel pass to uh, Baker once again. Rondy Weston, the right tackle, big sophomore for the Oakley, making the tackle. Even if that ball again does bounce free, it's merely an incomplete pass because it's going forward. So it's a very safe play, yet a trick play for the Kentucky Wildcats. Second down and five at the 25-yard line. Kentucky eating that clock up here in the second quarter. Controlling the football, keeping possession of that football. Moving it with success. 5.20 to play in the first half. Split backfield behind Ransdell as he puts a motion man. Smith to the bottom of the screen, number 19. Ransdell rolling, and he's looking downfield, and he throws, and it is incomplete. Incomplete. Good coverage by the Gators secondary including Lewis Oliver and uh, also number two, Adrian White and 32, Ricky Mulberry. Mark Wheeler was the intended receiver, but he's seen her tight end. On the spread out, he's got two running backs leading in appearance to give him a little bit more time to look down the field, trying to hit his tight end Wheeler, but Lewis Oliver had his hands on the football. Wasn't able to come up with the interception, but did knock it away. Third down and six at the 26-yard line now for the Wildcats. As they come out of the aisle, they split Burbage from the bottom of the screen to the right of Ransdell. And Ransdell looks the throw, shovel passes, and he is dropped right as he gets to the line of screen. Clifford Carlton really snipped that one out. He was right there to make the hit for the Gators. So we're going to see another field goal attempt. It'll be Joe Worley, the junior from Oakland, Virginia. They try to get the Gators thinking sprint out sprint out then they're going to dump the ball underneath the higgs but he's swarmed on at the line of scrimmage kentucky forced to try the long field goal again okay the kick is going to come from the 32 which means a 42 yard line it's fourth and five at the 25 officially so a 42 yard field goal attempt by warley right now the hole will come from Jones. and it is no good Seven to nothing, Kentucky. We'll be right back after this. Milk, milk, that's the kick that gives you more. Milk kick, more nutrition in every pore. Milk kick, I got the kick and milk is good. We got the yummy vitamins that you fall with. So get all the help you can let it pour. America's favorite milk kick. Well, we're back to action here at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky. The uh, first carry was by number 38, Dwayne Ferguson. And Dwayne Ferguson is down at the 30-yard line, but he picked up five yards, so it'll be second down and five for the Gators. They trailed 7-0 in the first half, 354 to play. In this, the second period, I formation with a slot to the right side, and the give-off is going to go to Matthew, who is hit 
as he hits the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play as the University of Kentucky's Doug Hauser, uh, left guard from Alequippa, Pennsylvania. 6'3", 245, making the tackle. That's Mike Ditka's hometown. Gators just having no success at all on offense right here. They need to give their defense a rest as well as get points on the board. The Kentucky fans are on their feet because Kentucky's controlling this football, controlling this football game. Third and five at the 30-yard line for the Gators with a slot offense is Kerwin Bell with the throw and does. He's got Darryl Willard. Willard is at the midfield stripe. He's at the 40. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. He's at the 10 and taken down inside the five-yard line. A great catch and run by Darryl Willard, the freshman out of Gainesville Side High School. Now what's so exciting about this play, and Kerwin Bell's probably the most excited player on the field right now, is he hits him in perfect stride. He doesn't even blink. Watch Willard just flat out full speed catching the football. He's dead on the run right now, but he is going to get caught from behind. He's hustling, hustling, hustling. But Don Robinson making an all-out effort. Big, big play by Don Robinson catching Darrell Willard at the five-yard line. That would have been touchdown city. First and goal for the Gators. Split backfield behind Bell. He's got Hodges split to the right side. To give off to Massey. Massey hits him, stacked up by the Kentucky D. They were right there again. The safety, Ron Robinson making the hit, coming in from the safety spot for the blue and white. Ron Robinson just makes that great play on defense, chasing Daryl Willard down from behind. Then he comes up on the very next play and makes the big hit at the line of scrimmage. A lot of effort and character shown by Ron Robinson, number 26, the safety for the Kentucky Wildcats. The Florida Gators here with an excellent chance to get on the scoreboard, get the touchdown. Second and goal at the five-yard line. Again, the split backfield behind Bell with Hodges split out. He's looking end zone. The Hodges incomplete. Eric Hodges, incomplete pass. As he was coming off of the right side, David Johnson, the left side quarterback, the coverage man for Kentucky. He's a sophomore out of Louisville, number 24. Eric Hodges next to Ricky Nateel, uh, one of the fastest players on the Florida football team. Had the chance to get the inside right there on David Johnson, but the ball was just, just beyond his reach. A nice effort by Eric Hodges, but incomplete nonetheless. Third and goal. The Gators go with a slot to the right side, off the five-yard line. Now Massey in motion. Kerwin Bell looking in zone, and it is incomplete. James Massey, the intended receiver, coming out of the backfield. Number 42, and Kurt Chenault, the coverage man, at the right side linebacker. Bell one for nine this afternoon. So that means that Bart is going to have to settle for the field goal. Kerwin Bell had an excellent touch on that football, just delivering the ball over the out. Reaching hands with Chris Chenault, number 45, but Massey was just not able to catch the football. So Ewing will hold, Bird will snap, and Jeff Dawson will attempt the kick. It will come from the 12-yard line, a 22-yard attempt, and it is good. And Florida is on the board, 7-3, to three, and we'll be right back. <laughs> is there with the help you need to make the most of them because at Merrill Lynch we believe your world should know no boundaries. Do not know boundaries. Before you draw a conclusion about health care insurance, remember this card and its instant recognition anywhere in America. Remember that no one works harder to provide local, reliable service statewide. Remember the wide choice of health care programs, quality programs at affordable costs. Finding answers to health care costs is what we've done for over 40 years, longer than anyone else. When you remember that, there's only one conclusion to draw. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Florida. Florida on the board with a field goal by Jeff Dawson, and now it is seven to three. Kentucky leads in the first half. One forty-nine to play in this first period. The uh, drive was a seventy-yard drive for the Florida Gators, so they put a good one together. McKinney is going to kick off number six. He moves to the football and boots it high. It'll be taken by Burke. And there's a reverse to Smith, and Smith is drilled at the fourteen-yard line. 
great play by the Gators special teams. Wayne Glover, I believe, number 33, and also number... John Spirito, number 41, right. a sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Let's see who makes the first hit. It is number 41, Spirito. First and 10 at the 15 now for the Wildcats. They're sitting on a 7-3 lead with a minute 41 to play. There's the drive, 7 plays, 70 yards. And Jet Dawson's field goal gets fired on the board. Ransdell gives off, and the give off is going to go to Higgs. Higgs on the 16-yard line before Florida brings him down. The Gator D uh, is right there. Steve Stipe, outside linebacker, is one of the first guys to make a hit, and they've called a timeout on the field. Gators want to stop that clock with 1.31 to go. They want another chance of getting that football. All right, we'll be back with more, but first, these messages. Gator fans, are you tired of searching through your sports section for scraps of information about your team? I'm David Sturt, publisher of Gator Bait, Florida's only sports weekly devoted to Gator coverage. It's all here, game recaps, player features, and extensive recruiting reports. 38 big issues for just $30. Subscribe now and I'll send you a free copy of the Florida Football Yearbook. Call me collect at 904-372-1215 to order your subscription. Don't wait, get Gator Bait. And we'd like to remind you that Jim and I will be picking our Mid-State Federal Player of the Game, and that will be coming up in the fourth quarter this afternoon. Second down, again, eight at the 17-yard line for the Kentucky Wildcats with a minute 31 to play in the first half. Scoreboard indicates the Gators have two timeouts left. If they can stop Kentucky on this play, they'll certainly call another timeout. They want a shot at getting that football back before the half is over. So here the Wildcats taking their time, of course, coming out of the huddle. They'll go with a slot to the right side, and Burbage four will be the slot back in an I formation. And Ransdell gives off, and the give off is going to go to number 22, Higgs. And Higgs goes to about the three-yard line before he's brought down, and he's going to be short of the first down. Higgs does an excellent job of eluding the Gator defenders who think they have him wrapped up, think they have a shot at making the tackle. And then they're on the ground, and he's still running. Very elusive young back, 5'7", 185. Todd Gatlin making the tackle for the Gators. It's third down, less than a yard on the 24, less than a minute to play in the first half. Ransdell gives off to Higgs, and Higgs gets to the line. I think he's going to be short of the first down. We'll see where they are file. And uh, the Gators making good contact there. Todd Gatlin, 48. As you see, getting up and uh, playing a good, strong game this afternoon. The officials have called timeout themselves right here to look at the uh, markers, see if it is a first down or not. They're going to bring the chains out. So we've got an official timeout. 48 seconds left to play in the first half. And they're measuring it. the first down. So that means that Kentucky is sitting on that 7-3 lead right now. With the first down at the 25-yard line. Now you can't go to sleep here on defense. They're not necessarily just going to simply run this clock out with the, the trick plays that we've seen so far this afternoon. They can try anything right here to try and get on the board again before the half is over. Ransdell gives off and to the 20-yard line. He's caught way behind the line of scrimmage with that clock is ticking away. Jeff Roth, the middle guard, the sophomore from Seminole, Florida, making the hit for the orange and blue. Now that kind of answers the question. It looks like they are going to let the clock run out. They're going to take the 7-3 lead into the locker room. The clock is ticking away right now. Ten seconds left to play in the uh, first half. And they are letting it just go ahead and uh, wind down. That's the end of the first half. Kentucky leads by a score of 7-3, and we would 
would like to remind you Gator fans who are planning to travel to Tallahassee for the FSU game in two weeks, plan to be there a night early to see the Gator basketball team open its season against Florida State Seminoles that game Friday evening at 7.30 in the Leon County Civic Center. And on November 17th, the Gators play their annual exhibition game against athletes and actors at 7.30 in the O'Connell Center. You can call the Gator ticket office toll-free at 1-800-342-7851 for more information. So, Kentucky being pretty dominant offensively in the uh, first half, the Gators have bent defensively, but not really broken, giving up the uh, one touchdown, a couple of field goal attempts went awry, and so their touchdown stood. Florida making uh, a good drive on the grab by Woolard, who got the football down very close to scoring position, but they couldn't get it in the end zone and had to settle for the field goal. Kentucky actually missing a number of opportunities to get more points on the scoreboard. Gators fortunate that it's only 7-3 uh, to three here at the half. Kerwin uh, Bell's going to have to throw the football, I believe, to, for the Gators to have some success uh, this afternoon. Kentucky with three men deep, most of the time crowding that line of scrimmage with the other eight to shut down the run. Don't be surprised to see Kerwin unload the football very often in that second half. Here's Albert the Alligator getting ready to have a good time here at the half with the uh, University of Florida marching band. And we'll be back with the board. But first, let's take time out for these messages. The Gators having little success throwing the football. Kerwin Bell to Darrell Woolard was the only reception of the first half for the Gators, yet Ransdell was 14 of 17. Galen Hall wants his guys to get fired up on this chilly day as we get ready to pick up the uh, second half. And the third quarter is so important because I believe the team that establishes control of the third quarter is going to win this game. The longer that Kentucky stays in this ball game, the more confidence they get that they can win it. We'd just like to remind you that this telecast of Gator football is being seen by fans all over the state of Florida and the United States. So no matter where you are, we'd like to hear from you. Send us a card or letter with a self-addressed stamp envelope and we'll send you a Gator bumper sticker and a Gator keychain. Your comments also welcome. Send your card or letter to Gator Television Network, Post Office Box 14485, Gainesville, Florida, 32604. Yeah, we enjoyed hearing from Jeremy and Clay Brown in Orlando, Florida. Watching our ball games down there. Got a nice letter from Jim Beach in Boca Raton. So it's always nice to hear that the fans are there and enjoy our telecast, because we certainly enjoy bringing them to you. Gary Claiborne, the head coach at the University of Kentucky, is on about her. Dropping back for Florida is Cedric Smith, 39, and Kerry Watkins, 4. They'll be in the return position for the Gators. A big possession starting the second half. Who's going to control the line of scrimmage? Who really wants this football game? Again, as you start the half, there's a lot of confidence that you can gain when you take control early. And you can lose your confidence, too, as well. Joe Worley will be kicking off as we begin the second half for the Wildcats of Kentucky. The Gators in a receiving position as Worley, number 15, gets ready to move to the football. He gets it high, and it's going to be picked up by Florida at the 15-yard line, and he is across the 20 to the 22-yard line. Dwayne Ferguson, number 38, making their return for the Florida Gators. And so they set up shop and go up against the Wildcats of Kentucky from over the 20-yard line at the 23. Unusual stat there for Kerwin Bell. One for nine. Kerwin Bell anxious to get that arm warmed up here in the third quarter. Move the football with some consistency. Move that Gator offense up and down the field. Well, here they come as they get ready to come out of the huddle. And big Frank McCarthy will be up over the football. The senior from White House Point. High formation with receivers left and right now for the Gators. Eric Hart is the motion man, number 10. And the giveoff is going to go to the fullback. And he is stacked up as he hits the line. James Massey, the junior from Monticello Jefferson High School, on the carry. And Dick Adams, the freshman from Middlesbrough, Kentucky, making the tackle for the Cats. Kentucky continues to crowd that line of scrimmage with eight men. Ricky Mathiel 
had single coverage right there. Looked for the Gators to take advantage of that matchup. TDR pick up its second down and eight at the 25-yard line for Florida. As they come, this time they go with a slot, and the seal would be wide, 89. And Hodges 10 in the slot. The back's in an eye. And Kerwin Bell is looking to throw. He's got the time and the blows. And it is instantly intended for Ricky Mateel. Goes in and out of the hands of Tony Mays, the right side quarterback, who was right there. Mateel, excuse me, Jim. Mateel and Eric Hodges were hooking up Looking for the football, Kerwin had two options right there, decided to go to Mateel, and then Tony Mays almost did come up with that deflected pass. Went through the hands, a little bit overthrown for Ricky Mateel. Well, it's going to be a while, but we will be picking our Wednesday Federal Player of the Game in the fourth quarter. It's third down eight on the 25-yard line again, the Gators with a slot offense to the left side, and Kerwin Bell dropping the throw. He does, and he's got James Massey, and Massey is at the 32-yard line before he's taken down. Take it down at the 32-yard line, and let's see if he's got enough for the first down. It's going to be pretty close. And uh, Ron Robinson making the tackle. Yes, he was short of the first down, Jim. Here comes the funny unit on the field as we look at Kerwin Bell again. Backs and wide receivers have to be aware of where they have to get to pick up the first down. Of course, they can't butcher their route either. They have to run the route they're supposed to run, but if there's an opportunity to get beyond where you need to get to get the first down, they have to be aware of that. McAndrews deep in punt formation, and he gets the kick off the side of his foot. It's going to roll across the 30, be taken down on the 28-yard line by Cornell Burbick, a senior from here in Lexington, and it'll be first down and 10 for the Wildcats as we begin the third quarter. a close game in Gainesville, which went down to the last 15 or 20 seconds before Jeff Dawson's field goal won it. And Cedric Smith gets knocked right back into his own punter. Jamie McAndrew right there. Kentucky doing a nice job putting pressure on the punt. Mark Gates going through the ball carrier, and he is hit as he gets to the line of scrimmage. And the tackle made by Steve Stike. Ransville was 14 for 17, 95 yards this afternoon. They call it Dollar Bill. His dad played at Kentucky. Terrific first half for the senior quarterback. His last ball game at Commonwealth Stadium. Second down, 10. Ball at the 29-yard line. Ransville rolling to the left side, looking. And can't find anybody to open. Take it down behind the line of scrimmage. Clifford Carrollton there. The Gators taking it down. Simply an All-American All-Star effort by Clifford Charlton right there. He was trying to keep the quarterback inside. Watch Rensdale sprinting. Now Clifford Charlton's responsible for keeping him inside. He goes up right there trying to deflect the pass. Now he's going to break off the blocking attempt of Logan and still make the tackle. Henry Brown coming up the second, to help out. That's the 10th sack by Charlton, and he is just two away from Alonzo Johnson's record of 12. Third and 12 is Ransdale. Johnson throws. It is complete to the 45 line for a first down. And here it fits. The senior from Lima, Ohio, is split in. And uh, Florida takes him down at the 39-yard line. But there is a flag on the play. Ransdale going to Pitts, uh, their leading receiver, coming into this ball game. He steps up inside the rush. Keith Williams trying to hustle over there and put some pressure on him, but Pitts comes up with a reception and the first down. Lewis Oliver making the hit just about the 39-yard line of Kentucky. So it is first down for the Wildcats right now as they go to work driving on the Florida Gators. They're here on the near side hash mark. They go with a slot to the wide side. And the give-off is going to go to Hughes, and he rips it for another Kentucky first down across the 50 to the 48-yard line of Florida. Mark Higgs, uh, the ball carrier, Lewis Oliver making the tackle. Wildcats having a lot of success off tackle this afternoon. Higgs, who had seen very little duty this season with, season with Ivy Joe Hunter being the uh, primary tailback for the Kentucky Wildcats all season. Hunter out with an injury and Higgs 69 yards this afternoon. 
There's the pitch. It's going to go to Higgs, and he comes back to his side here. He's been chased out by the Florida D. They take him down at about the 24-yard line, and it's Henry Brown running him down, number 99. Now, I think that play was designed to go to the left, but they wound up coming back to the right. Steve Stipe is going to get outside trying to force Mark Higgs to turn it up so Stipe's Gator teammates can come over and make the tackle. Second and six. Big, big drive right here for Kentucky. As I mentioned, if they can control this football, make something happen on offense in the third quarter, they're going to get more and more confidence in their ability to win this football game. The giveoff is going to go to Baker, and Baker takes off the left side inside the 40 to about the 39 yard line. Adrian Point, the senior from Warren Park, Florida, making the tackle for the Park. Third about two yards to go on the near 40 yard line. 10 minutes and 15 seconds to play in the third quarter, and Kentucky leading Florida by a score of 7 to 3. Keith Williams and Henry Brown now in at the defensive tackle position. Jeff Roth at the nose guard. Arthur White, Scott Armstrong at the inside linebacker position. Pitch to Logan, and Logan turns to the near side. He's been taken down by the Florida D. Clifford Charlton gets right there to make the tackle for the Gators. Big, big play by that Gator defense, penetrating the Kentucky offensive line, making things happen on the other side of the line of scrimmage right there. Kentucky having had success running the football that time, the Gators stuffed the play. Jeff Nelson in punt formation, line of scrimmage the 41, it's actually four and three, and Nelson waiting for the snap on the 45 of Kentucky, and he gets off a high one. Gary Watkins calls for it, and it takes the Florida bounce back across the 10-yard line before it will be blown dead. So it's going to be at the 11-yard line, and the Gators will take over the football, and it'll be first and 10 for Florida. They trail by four, Kentucky leading 7-3. to three. Well, neither team getting the advantage right here in the third quarter. The Gators had an opportunity to move it a little bit. Kentucky shut them down. The Gators punted. Kentucky was able to move the football with some success, but the Gators both are back on defense, forcing Kentucky to punt. Now the Gators are on their own 10-yard line. Not the kind of field position you want to have on offense. Slot offense to the right side for Kerwin Bell as he comes to the line with the eye formation. And the give-off is going to go to Massey. And Massey gets to maybe the 13-yard line before he's taken down by Kentucky. And Christian Alt, the right side linebacker, making the tackle for the Cats. The Gators continuing to run the football on first down here in the second half. Having very little success with only one completion this afternoon. Throwing the football with 8.50 to go in the third quarter. Second and seven at the 14-yard line for Florida. As Corwin Bell drops the throw. And he lets go. And it is complete to the 31-yard line to Ricky Latiel. So they get the first down as Latiel makes the catch for the Gators. And... Uh, David Johnson makes the tackle, the left side cornerback for the University of Kentucky. That's Natil's first reception of the afternoon. David Johnson, the cornerback, gives him plenty of room because Natil has that blazing speed. Natil hooks behind the linebacker, uh, Carwell Gardner, and in front of the cornerback, David Johnson, to come up with the reception on the hook end round. Steele will go wide to the left, Hodges will be in the slot, first and 10 off the 31-yard line for Florida. Again, Bell, and he's being blitzed as he lets go on, again looking for the tail that is incomplete. And Tony Mays, number three, makes a good play on the ball for Kentucky. Erwin Bell takes a big hit as he waits and waits and waits to the last minute to throw this football. Good protection immediately, but look to the outside, here comes the blitz, Jay Dortch. Kerwin unloads the football deep down the field, hoping Ricky Mateel can lean to the outside to come up with the reception, but Tony Mays just made an excellent play right there. Tony Mays, the senior from Paintsville, Kentucky. It's also, it's a tough catch for a guy with a separated shoulder, and uh, Bell is two for four this half for 24 yards, second and 10, off the 31-yard line. Again, they're going with a slot to the left as Bell drops and looks to throw, and does, and he gets Massey coming out of the backfield, and Massey taken down at the 37-yard line. 
It is Jake Norton, sophomore right end, who makes the tackle for Kentucky. I might mention that Tony Lomack, the young freshman, has been moved to wide receiver, did not even make the trip this afternoon with the Gators because of an injury problem. Stacy Simmons, a true freshman, seeing a lot of activity at the wide receiver position. Right now he's in the ball game with Eric Hodges. They have a slot formation to the right. Third and three at the 38-yard line for Florida's Gators. As Kerwin Bell drops back again to throw, he's being chased and taken down way by the line of scrimmage by Carwell Gardner, number 98, the sophomore from Louisville. So a big play defensively for the blue and white cats. Carwell Gardner was unaccounted for right there, simply no one there to block him at all. He had a straight shot at Kerwin as Kerwin sprinted to the right. McAndrew has called for a timeout, and we'll be right back after these messages. McAndrew was going to punt fourth and 16 from the 25, and as he sail it high, Burbage will take it now at the 27 yard line. And so he's going to give the Wildcats excellent field position. First and ten at the, we're going off the 47, so it will be Ransdell with receivers left and right and an eye. And Ransdell goes to throw, he does, and he's got perfect. He steps out in front of the Kentucky bench at the 40-yard line. And taking him out is Kerry Watkins, number four. Cornell Burbage had Kerry Watkins thinking he was going to go deep. As he made the break to the sideline, he was wide open. Burbage running an excellent route right here. Kerry Watkins at least four yards off of him as he receives the football. And the reason that happened was because he gave him that deep threat, gave him that little look like he was going to go deep, then cut to the sideline. First and ten at the 39-yard line of Florida. Ransdell gives off to Higgs, and Higgs is stacked up on the right side. Avery and a white strong side safety, the senior from Orange Park, Florida. It's six feet, 203, making the tackle. He had some real good hits against Georgia in his home ballpark. Jacksonville last week. Adrian White will see uh, a lot of action in the NFL in the future, and he's an excellent safety, one of the best safeties in college football. Right there, closed rapidly to make the hit at the line of scrimmage. That's what a safety has to do on the running play. Second and eight at the 37-yard line now. As Ransdell rolls, he's looking downfield, and he's going to turn up field. He is taken out in front of the Kentucky bench and taken out as big Rondy Weston, 6'5", 250. Ransdell again showing that poise of the senior, the leadership that he has exemplified for the last two years as the Kentucky starting quarterback. This is his third year as the starter against the Florida Gators. Ransdell continues to impress as we look at Pat Pitter and Webby Burnett playing on that defensive line for the Gators, trying to put the halt to the Kentucky Wildcats. Third and five at the 34-yard line now. Burbage for the motion man. A split backfield behind Ransdell. And Ransdell rolling to the left side, looking downfield and throws, and he's got his man, Higgs, who's drilled, and I don't know if he's got the first down. I don't think he's got enough for it. Adrian Point again making the tackle. With the cornerback, Jarvis Williams also making the hit. It'll be fourth been less than a foot, possibly a foot. Jerry Claiborne thinking about whether he should go for this one or not. They've not had much success with the three-pointer. Looks like they're going to go for it. The crowd is on its feet here at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. Kentucky leading 7-3 in this third quarter. 5-22 to play in this period. Ransdell, Ransdell gives to oh, Higgs. I don't know if he got it. I don't think they, so. I don't think so. The Gators stuffed him. They looked like they stuffed him right there. Did they ever? The Gators, Jarvis Williams there. As you can see, Arthur White getting up there. 43, Arthur White, Scott Armstrong, they were all there. The Gators gambled a bit there on defense, I think. Uh, Kentucky 
did run the football. The Gators were gambling that they were going to run the football off tackle rather than come with a play-action pass, and they had a lot of men in the backfield on Kentucky before the back had a chance to even approach the line of scrimmage. Just a big, big play. As we look at the Gator band, and we need to mention that uh, this is the only trip that the Gator band had to make this year, and so they're happy about that fourth down play. Pat Pinner, number 50, in there as well. Pat seeing some action. A defensive tackle. First and ten at the 30 for the Gators. The pitch is going to go to Gould. Gould turning outside and take it out in front of the Gator bench after a short gain by Don Dorado, the senior from Zanesville, Ohio, at the left side linebacker spot for Kentucky. Jerry Claiborne did take a bit of a gamble, but it was uh, a good gamble. I feel Kentucky wants to win this football game. They had an opportunity right there to up a critical first down, but the Gator defense just rose to the occasion and did not allow it to happen. Octavia School with 23 yards this afternoon in four carries. Second and six from the 34, slot to the left side. Erwin Bell pitches to Blue. Bill turns inside and gets to the 39-yard line before he's taken down by Kentucky and Jay Dorch. Outside linebacker making the tackle for the Wildcats. Doug Townsend. 40 to go in the third quarter. The University of Florida Gators with a big third down here on their own 39-yard line. Third and a yard. Big Anthony Williams at the fullback position. Jeff Zimmerman and David Williams playing at the tackle positions for the Gators on offense. Big third down right now for Florida as Kerwin Bell gives and he gets it to Gould. And I think Gould's got the first down on the 41-yard line. Octavius Gould, the ball carrier. Wasn't very pretty, but it was a first down nonetheless, a big first down for the Gator offense. Uh, Dick Adams making the tackle. Kerwin looks to the sideline as he gets information from Galen Hall. Well, the tail has just checked out and Simmons has checked in, so plays in the huddle right now. State Federal is Florida's full service financial center. Octavia School with a quick hitting trap play up front. It looked like Bob Sims on the trap play. Right there, Spring School, loose, Mark McGriff looking for a linebacker to hit. Gators picking up a big first down inside. A 
it's a dead ball personal foul going against the Florida Gators. Inside Kentucky territory now on the uh, Wildcat 41, 42 yard line. Going five carries for 29 yards this half. Three minutes and one second to play. Some players after the first down had already been accomplished. Gould on the run picked up the first down, the whistle blew. Then there was the activity that called the penalty. Therefore, they marched backward from where Gould made his forward progress. 15 yards, that's first and 25. That's a jam right at the 44. It's a split backfield as Bell looks to throw. And he's going to go along down the middle for the CEO. By Tony Mays, the right side cornerback who was deep on the coverage intended for Ricky Petillo. Beautiful play by Tony Mays, almost coming up with the, the football right there. Kerwin Bell gets plenty of time. David Williams blocking up front. Kerwin steps forward, lets the ball fly down the field, and Mays cuts underneath Petillo, almost comes up with the interception. Just an excellent play by the senior cornerback. Second down, 25 at the 44. With the eye, here is Bell at the line. This pitch is going to go to Gould. Gould turns it up and is taken down by Kentucky. Jeff Kramer, right linebacker, makes a tackle for the blue and white Wildcats on the chilly afternoon in Lexington. Now the Gators thought that uh, Kentucky might be playing a little soft right there, expecting a pass. They come with a pitch to the tailback, but... Wildcats converge rapidly on Gould and preventing picking up any significant yardage. It'll be third down at 22 at the 47 for the Gators. There's a little over two minutes to play in the third quarter. And the Gators trail at the second to the seventh of three. An I formation for Kerwin Bell. He was dropping the throw. And he got the roads right down the middle to Ricky Matilda. So that brings up fourth down and look at comes over. Again, Tony Mays making that excellent play. Matil having the distance to pick up the first down, but Mays got there at the same time the football did, causing the incompletion. Fourth and 22, the ball at the 47. The kick is going to come from about the, he's standing at the 32, from about the 35-yard line. <laughs> Low snap, and McAndrew just did get that one off. I believe it was touched. I think somebody got a hand on it, but it is going to roll down to the 26-yard line. Jeff Primer, number 53, did get a hand on the football after the low snap. Gave McAndrew some trouble. Kentucky putting a lot of pressure on the Gator punter this afternoon. Primer, high in the air, just does get a fingertip on the football. First and 10 at the 26 yard line for the Wildcats. A minute 40 to play in the third quarter, and they lead Florida 7 to 3. Slot to the right side, and Bill Ramsden gone all the way at quarterback this afternoon. Hands off. Hand off goes to Dean Suzuki as he gets to the 25 yard line. So he might have lost the yard on the carry. Matt Moore, a freshman from Pensacola, a champion high school, making the tackle for Florida. Ken Blagg is the center, number 61, the big guy up here to the football. And Ransdell looks the throw. He's taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Gets right in there, gets in behind the 20. It's 11 sack. And because Keith Williams is playing with a severe case of the flu this afternoon, played very little in the first half. Yep, 
Nelson, number one, dropping back in front formation. Three kicks this afternoon, averaging 27 yards per move. Only about seven seconds left in this third quarter this afternoon. He gets it and he squibs off the side of his foot. Goes out in front of the Kentucky bench. And for 40, that's going to give Ward an excellent field position. We'll be back with four after this. <laughs> First and ten at the 38-yard line as you look at the Kentucky coaching staff there, and they're really talking to the Wildcat D. The football is at the 38-yard line of Kentucky. The Gators have the football. Kentucky leads by a score of 7-3 to three as we begin the fourth quarter at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington. An excellent break for the Florida Gators getting tremendous field position inside Kentucky's 40-yard line after the poor punt. I believe it was a 21-yard effort. He's averaging 26 yards this afternoon. Receivers left and right, eye formation, and somebody jumps. Flags all over that field. I think it was uh, Jeff Zimmerman who jumped off sides on the right side. So that's going to cost Flower to five. It's first and 15 at the 43. And uh, Jim, it looks like Clifford Charlton is in strong running. My vote is the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. Well, Clifford Charlton was the player of the week in the Southeastern Conference last week against the Georgia Bulldogs. He plays with uh, tremendous enthusiasm and effort every Saturday afternoon. A lot of talent in that linebacker for the part of the Gators. First and 15 at the 43 for the Gators. High formation as Bell looks at the Cats. And the give-off goes to the up-back. Anthony Williams. And he goes for it to the, call it the 36-yard line. So a nice carry for Anthony. Jay Dorch making the tackle for Kentucky. 217-pound fullback slipping and breaking two or three tackles right there. Giving the Gators a shot at uh, what, second and eight. Second and eight at the 36-yard line. Slot and Curry and Rock and Rook and Monroe. There's a pressure incomplete. Intended for a famous goal coming out of the backfield. And Curry Bell was really hit and hit hard. And he is getting up. They're picking him up. Doug Hauser, jump number 99, putting great pressure on from the inside, from the uh, defensive guard position. Kerwin had to unload that ball in a hurry. Didn't have a chance to get it. Octavius Gold, who was wide open, and beyond the first down mark. So it's third down and eight at the 36 now for the Gators. As they split on just to the bottom of the screen. With the eye formation again, Kerwin Bell. The throw, he's been chased out of the pocket, short out of the backfield to Anthony Williams, falls is incomplete. And so that brings up fourth down. Anthony Williams, a junior from Tampa Pine High School. And we're going to see a long field goal attempt by Robert McGinty, who has hit one this year from 51 yards away against Auburn. Well, this will... We'll approach that one, won't it? Let's yes, see what it's going to be. Well, the line of scrimmage is the 36, so let's see where they set up. No, they're going to go ahead and punt. Oh, they're going, to, they're going to punt. I thought they were going to go with a field goal attempt, but they're going to punt. Looks like they're punting with the field goal team. McAndrew. He squibs it off the side of his foot. And we'll be back with more. But first, let's take time out for these messages. On first and ten, here is the throw by Ransdell to Burbage. Takes him out at the 39, another first down. And so it's first and ten at the 39-yard line. And carrying the football on first down is Mark Higgs, the junior from Owensboro, Kentucky. He crosses the 45-yard line to the 47 before Arthur White takes him down. Kentucky 7, Florida 3. We're into the fourth quarter at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington as we look at number nine, Bill Ransdell. Holder of so many records here at Kentucky. Total offense this afternoon for the Cats 229, for the Gators 168. Biggs has 83 yards this afternoon. It is Baker getting the call. He might have gotten the yard, but it was tough yardage for it. Uh, but he could have picked up the first down. We'll see. Clifford Carlton making the tackle. Baker with only 64 yards rushing the football this season. Seeing some action out there this afternoon. Well, they get the first down. So the Cats keep their drive going. They hang on to the football. 
Kentucky very impressive on offense this afternoon. Bill Ransdale throwing the ball with great effectiveness, effectiveness and they're also able to run the football. Well, first and 10 at the 49-yard line for the Wildcats. Ransdale looks to throw. A quick one to Baker. Baker crosses the midfield strike and into Florida territory down to the 43 yard line of the Gators before Arthur White takes his bound. He'll be short of the first down. Kentucky with a bootleg action to the right, then throwing back to Baker, the tailback on the screen. The screen pass, very big play in Kentucky's offensive playbook. Inside Gator toward territory on the 40. Second down and two for the Wildcats. They go with the eye, they split very really wide to the top of your screen to the right side. And now the motion man is Baker in the pitch. Is going to go a little bit. Peter's Jarvis Williams, the first guy to make some contact with the orange and blue. Henry Brown and Scott Armstrong also on the tackle. But Kentucky continues to move the football as we look at Ransdale's 19 for 22, 147 yards thus far in this ballgame. A tremendous effort by the senior quarterback for the Wildcats. He's having a great afternoon. First and 10 now for the Wildcats at 39. The split backfield behind Ransdale. Burbage for the motion man. And the give-off is going to go to the fullback. He goes straight up the middle. That is Anthony Murray, number 35. Clifford Carlton making the tackle for the Gators as he gets inside the 30 to the 34-yard line. Big Brad Myers, number 71 at left guard. Miamisburg, Ohio, doing an excellent job up front. That Kentucky offensive line uh, protecting Ransdell and getting the yards as they run the football. So it's second down five at the 34-yard line now for the Wildcats, 11-13 to play in the game. This is a gigantic drive for the Kentucky Wildcats right here. Can't remove the football there and get points on the board. Ransdell's give is going to go to Higgs, and he is to the 32 of the first down. Clifford Carroll's making the tackle. 33, Kentucky having the opportunity right here to perhaps Use two plays to pick up the first down if they get close. Earlier on a previous drive, they did go for it on fourth down and didn't make it, but I think they might go for it again in an effort to pick up the first down if they can get close right here. It's 85 yards this afternoon. Ransdell rolling to the left side, looking. He's being chased by the Gators. Comes up, and he's going to get the first down himself. As he crosses to the right side, Clifford Charlton trying to chase him down with Gary Watkins, but he's got the first down at about the 27-yard line. Ransdale sprinting to the left, looking for Cornell Burbage, but he's covered, so he's going to have to come up with an alternative. Adrian White in his face. Now he's going to sprint to the right because there's no containment right there, and he's going to dive and lunge for the first down. Excellent effort by Bill Ransdale. Just a tremendous effort. First and 10 at the 26-yard line now for the Wildcats. They lead 7 to 3. 10 minutes to play in the ball game. Ransdell gives off. And he's going to go to Higgs. And Higgs is still out of his And down to the 15-yard line. And finally, Jairus Williams puts a hit. Gary Watkins and Adrian White. And they take him down. Higgs just bouncing off the Gator defenders. One, two, three in a row. That's Henry Brown. Henry Jarvis Williams, Adrian White now making the tackle. The fans, the Kentucky faithful are on their feet cheering their team, trying to get them in the end zone as we look at 9.33 on the clock here in the fourth quarter. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. High formation. Ramsdale's give is going to go to Baker, and Baker swarmed by Florida. Scott Armstrong. There, along with Clifford Carlton, taking him down as he tries to turn it to the right side. Baker seeing action right now, trying to give Mark Hicks a break. Mark Hicks carrying the football a lot this afternoon. Now Baker comes out and Hicks returns to the ball game. Kentucky showing power football right now, just shoving it down the Gators' throat. Second and nine. And the pitch is going to go to Logan, and Logan just stops out. Oh, Logan gets away, and Logan goes 
goes into the end zone, but let's see what the situation is, though. No, they say no touchdown, he was down. Yeah, they blew There's the whistle. Flag. They blew the whistle. Evidently, he continued with his effort, not hearing the whistle, screaming in the end zone, but the play seems to be dead on about the 15-yard line, and there's a flag on the field as well. Well, they're talking with Florida. Let's see what the uh, call is. It looks like it's going to go as a hold, and it's against Kentucky. And that's going to send the Cats way back. Big break for that Gator defense. Kentucky having success in this drive, especially now they come up with a middle error, making the violation on the running play, a holding this detected, and they're going to be set back. Well, late in the fourth quarter, this quarter, Tim and I will pick the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. At the end of the season, a scholarship will be awarded to the university in honor of the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. As the football goes back to the 24-yard line. So it'll be second down at 19 for the Wildcats. Here we see the pitch to Logan. Now the whistle evidently does blow. Logan continues toward the end zone, but there was a 10-yard penalty for holding. Kentucky backed up temporarily. Burbage in motion to the bottom of the screen as Ransdell rolls to the left side. He's looking right there, and he's been chased, and he will be taken out of bounds here on the Kentucky bench. And the Gator defense nearly chased him down. Jason Lambert, Clifford Charlton, and also Jarvis Williams. Ransdell sprinting to the left, looking for Cornell Burbage. Keith Williams in hot pursuit, Rondy Weston. Clifford Charlton, there comes Jarvis Williams. Burbage with four receptions for 60 yards this afternoon. The favorite seat receiver for the Kentucky Longhead there, looking for him to get in the end zone. Third down, 18 on the 23. Shotgun as Ransdell looks, he's got plenty of time. Chased out of the pocket, it's going to turn up field, and he will be taken down by the Gators inside the 20 at the 19 yard line. Gator D, Clifford Charlton playing a great game this afternoon. Takes him right down at the 18 yard line. So we've got fourth down and 12. Gator going to see a field goal attempt by Worley. Gator defense very tired. They've been on the field a lot this afternoon, especially in that last drive as Kentucky. Kentucky moved the ball. 34 yard attempt by Worley. Jones with a hold. Worley boots it and it is good. And Kentucky leads by a score of 10 to 3. And we will be right back after this. Worley getting ready to kick off after booting that field goal for Kentucky. 10-3 to score, 641 to play. Florida gets the football back. And it's going to go high. It will be taken by Gary Watkins at the 5. He's at the 10. He's at the 20-yard line. He's at the 25, the 30, the 35. He's across the 40. And he is across the 50-yard line before he is taken down. What a great run back by Watkins. And the place kicker, Worley, is the guy that made the tackle. Well, if ever the Gators needed a big play, it's right here as they trail Kentucky 10-3 with 6.30 left in the fourth quarter. Gary Watkins just literally sprints up the sideline with a caravan of Gators blocking and opening the way for him. Excellent job, the Gators on the Rockets 49. First and 10 at the 49, a 41-yard return. And the give-off is going to go to Anthony Williams, and Anthony's inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Brings it off, brings it down. Late in the fourth quarter, Jim and I will pick the Penn State Federal Player of the Game at the end of the season. The scholarship will be awarded to the University in honor of the Penn State Federal Player of the Game. 13 yards, excuse me, 13 plays, 58 yards, time of possession, 7-19. That's why that Gator defense was so tired. 7-19 on the last scoring drive by Kentucky. First down on the 34 for the Gators with the eye formation. And the give-off again is going to go to Anthony Williams, but Kentucky was waiting for that when they take him down after a two-yard game. Jerry Reese, a junior left tackle from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, makes the tackle for the Cats. And big Carwell Gardner with a big hit as well right there. Anthony Williams doing well just to hold on to the football. 
So we've got second down and eight at the 32 for Florida. We look at Galen Hall with the eye formation now. Anthony Williams out of Tampa is the up back. Octavius Gould at the top of the eye. And Hodges is the motion man. Gould gets the ball and Gould inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Mike Bellata, the senior from Highland Heights, Ohio, the tackler for Kentucky. seconds to play in the game, Kentucky 10 and Florida 3 at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Kentucky. Third down, six. Here come the Gators. Big third down for them. Darrell Woodard in a slot to the left side. Dropping back is Kerwin Bell. He lets go long for Eric Hodges and it is incomplete. At the five-yard line, the coverage man, Tony Mays, for the University of Kentucky. Tony Mays coming at the last instant to make another play. This is five or six plays that he's made deep in the secondary. As Torch comes with the blitz, Kerwin Bell steps to deliver, but Mays at the last second, playing a tremendous football game. Bell is four for 20 this afternoon. I just was there, had the step, but Mays just closed rapidly and knocked the football away. Fourth and six at the 30-yard line. 4.51 to play in the game. Kentucky up 10 to three. We'll be right back after these messages. Fourth down and six yards to go on the 30-yard line. Look for Galen Kentucky. Hall looks at the Florida team. Look for the blitz. And here's, here's Kerwin looking to throw. He throws a quick one out there. It is incomplete. Kentucky has held. It was intended for Anthony Williams. Harwell Gardner got in there. Number 98, the left tackle. Goes as incomplete. So Kentucky's got the football with 4.45 to play and a 10 to 3 lead. From the outside, Gardner coming on the blitz. No one there to pick him up. Pressures Kerwin. Kerwin throws the ball over. Away or is not able to deliver the football to any of his receivers. 4.45, still a lot of time to get that football back. If the Gator defense can do it. Gator D digs in now. Ramsdale is the quarterback. And he gives off to number 22, the running back. Mark Higgs, a flag on the play at the 31. And Higgs caught behind the line by Pat Moore. Big hit by Pat Moore in the backfield. It is a hold against Kentucky. So that's going to set him way back. But Pat Ward is blitzing him from his inside linebacker position. Sees the guard pull, fills the hole, chases the tail back down, make him hit in the back. They're going to refuse the penalty second in 14-13 or so. Second down and 12 at the 28-yard line. 433 to play in the ball game. Kentucky up 10 to 3 on the Gators. The Kentucky D has just held against the Florida drive. Now Florida's D digging in. Ramsdale gives off right straight up the middle. Goes Mark Logan, the fullback, and he gets the call at the 33 yard line before Rondy Weston takes him down. A little over four minutes to play. down right here for that part of your defense. Kentucky can pick up the first down and continue to beat that clock up if they can maintain possession. The Gators have to knock the football away or possibly come up to the turnover. 37 at the 33. Ramsdale rolling, rolling to the left side. Throws and they've got the first down across the 45-yard line as he throws on the run for a couple. 